What's up YouTube? Back with another random retro tech video. This time I'm taking a look at something really cool I found at the thrift store. An Alpha Smart Dana. When I came across this thing stacked in with the grimy keyboards, I had no idea what it was. I figured it was some sort of electronic memo pad or dictionary at first, and I almost passed it by until I noticed the Palm Powered logo on the bottom. That let me know that it was probably something special, so I might as well take it home and have a look. So this thing is essentially a really nice keyboard glued to a widescreen Palm Pilot. It has the standard suite of applets, a to-do list, an address book, but since it's running Palm OS 4, we can do a little bit more than just type. Yeah, Palm OS isn't the greatest gaming platform, but I think there might be a class of games perfectly suited to this device. Old school interactive fiction. If you haven't heard of these before, they're essentially digital choose-your-own-adventures, the most well-known probably Zork. Frobnitz is an interpreter for the data files for these games, allowing them to be playable on multiple operating systems, one of which is Palm OS. The port to the Dana allows the games to take full advantage of the widescreen, support save and resume, and seems relatively stable from my first impressions. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be able to read games stored to the SD card though, so if you do lose power, you'll need to do a reinstall. That's right. Like a lot of early handhelds, use your data on the Alpha Smart Dana stored in RAM without a battery backup. As for technical specs, I had to do a bit of digging. I found this promotional PDF from Palm on some spam site, but it tells us what we need to know. The Dana features a top-of-the-line Motorola Dragon Ball VC central processing unit clocking it at a blistering 33 MHz and boasts a whopping 16 MB of random excess memory. In addition, it features a display made out of literal liquid crystals at 560 by 160 pixels. That's nearly 1 6th HD in 16 gorgeous shades of gray. It also supports two SD cards with a maximum capacity of one gigabyte and can run on either a rechargeable nickel metal hydride battery pack or AA batteries. And last but not least, it runs Palm OS 4.1. Well, a touchscreen ultra portable writing device is pretty great, but what could make it even better? How about a sickly screen, barely effective backlight? Now we're talking. For some reason, I've always had a soft spot for that terrible backlight on the Palm devices. It doesn't work well, never has, but it's trying really hard. I appreciate the effort in spite of the outcome. I wasn't planning on recording this, so I don't have any way of showing what it originally looked like, cosmetically or before I did firmware update. But it was filthy, and for some reason the interface didn't take up the whole screen. Over on the reverse is the battery door, secured by a little Phillips head screw. Normally the rechargeable battery pack sits inside and attaches to the terminals on the right hand side. Removing the batteries for a few seconds doesn't clear the memory, but anything longer than that likely will. I've also replaced the rechargeable nickel metal hydride battery that was inside. One thing I really like about some of the early PDAs is that they could take simple AA batteries, and thankfully so can the data. Eventually I'll be making a new rechargeable battery pack when I can track down some decent cheap batteries, but for now the AA's will do. I gotta be extra diligent about saving my work to the SD card though. Once the machine loses power, anything saved to the RAM is erased. I'm going to go ahead and wipe this thing clean, and then I can show you how to get it set up to work with a Windows 7, 8, or 10 PC. And then I'll go over how to update the unit to version 1.5, which is the final version of the software. Then I'll show you how to get some text adventure games running on it to ruin all hope of getting any productive work done. After powering down, I got stuck in a boot loop. Holding down the power key allows you to do a full reset, so let's go ahead and do that and see if it helps. And thankfully it does, so now we can go through the initial setup. And we'll calibrate the screen and set the date. So here's what it looks like with the default set of applications. And checking out card info, we can see that the SD card is safe and sound. In terms of actual word processing, the Dana comes pre-installed with AlphaWord. It's a rebranded and tweaked version of WordSmith for Palm OS. It seems like a full-featured program that does what it needs to do without a lot of fluff. It has basic formatting, adjustable font sizes, word count, spell check, and can read and write files to the SD card. So I'll go ahead and create a little test file that we can take a look at later. Getting an older device like this to work together with a modern PC can sometimes be a bit of trouble. Unfortunately, Palm devices don't seem to be supported by 64-bit versions of Windows. Palm Desktop installed fine, but the device driver for the Dana didn't install at all. So when you first plug in your Dana, it will probably be detected as a USB input device, and Windows will go ahead and install a keyboard support driver. 
This will still let you use the send text function on the Dana, but you won't be able to sync without proper Palm device drivers installed. Thankfully, there is an alternative driver available that I found over at palmdb.net from a company called Eseca that's still manufacturing Palm devices. There are both 32 and 64-bit versions available that will allow you to sync your Palm device with Windows 7, 8, 10, or even Windows Vista if you're weird. To install the Palm device driver, extract the appropriate zip for your operating system. Then open up your control panel, the system display, and find the device manager. Then open the view menu and select show hidden devices. Next, plug in your Dana and see if it appears as a Palm device with a yellow exclamation point next to it. If Windows pops up with a prompt to install a device driver from Windows Update, select the option to skip obtaining device driver software from Windows Update. Then right click the Palm handheld and select Update Driver. Next, browse your computer and select the folder where you extracted the Aseca driver. You should see a prompt to install the driver and then you can go ahead and hit accept. Since I had the hot sync manager already running, the Dana just ended up syncing as soon as the device driver was installed. Updating the Dana to the final version of the software, version 1.5, was really simple thanks to the person that uploaded the software to palmdb.net. Download the update from PalmDB and then go ahead and extract it. Inside, you'll find updates for both the US and UK versions of the 8 and 16 megabyte versions of the Dana. Make sure that you flash the correct update for your version. I don't know what happens if you flash the wrong one, but it's not unheard of for a bad firmware update to break a device, so be careful. Extract the firmware update for your version from the subdirectory. The uploader did include all the instructions for updating, and I'll assume you read every word. In any case, drag the firmware update to the install tool that installed alongside HOD Sync Manager. Leave the destination as handheld and click Done. Then sync your device to install the update. The whole process took about 5 minutes on my unit. Well, in its current state, the keyboard is updated with an SD card installed and ready to go for some distraction-free writing. So let's ruin all prospects of future productivity by getting some of those interactive fiction games loaded up. To get games on the Dana, they need to be converted to a format that the Palm Installer tool can handle. The Frobnet's port of the Dana comes with a couple utilities to handle this. There's a console application called Z2PDB and also a graphical version called Z2PDB GUI Win32.exe. There are a ton of places online you can go to download Z Machine Code interactive fiction games. There are a lot of modern stories, but some of them veer into uh, Let's just say offbeat subjects, so I want to stick to some of the classics. Briefly owned the Infocom archives when I was a kid, but some of the games just didn't grab me at the time. I was probably busy trying to get Blakestone running or something, and I eventually traded the collection away. Since Infocom is long defunct, the games have been deemed abandoned where and are freely available online. The least banner and spyware weird in place I was able to find the lost archives of Infocom was a site called My Abandonware, but I'm sure you can find them elsewhere if you want to. This site just had download buttons I could actually find. So let's see how we can get those games going. So I'm going to download both the collections here and extract the zip files. And then hunt around in the directory of the lost treasures of Infocom for any games you might be interested in. The game data files we're looking for are the ones ending with the .dat extension. The Lost Treasures of Infocom 2 is distributed as a set of disk images, though. You'll need to extract these with 7-zip, WinImage, or something similar. Again, hunt around in the directory for any .dat files you might be interested in. In my case, I'll take them all. You can copy them to the Frobnets directory, or any other directory. I'm just going to make a separate one to keep things organized. After you've gathered all your data files, you can go ahead and load up the Z2PDB GUI application. If you don't want to be prompted to enter a title for each game you're converting, 
Before you convert, go ahead and select the Use File Name for Title option at the bottom. So I just want to give a big shout out to Patrick Sallow, who apparently put this application together. To get the games and frognets on the Dana, just load up the installer tool and either use the Add dialog or drag and drop your files into the window. If you've got Hot Sync Manager loaded, you can hit the function key and the sync button at the same time and it'll begin syncing. Tapping the Apps button lets you cycle through menus of the installed apps. Apps loaded to the SD card will appear on a separate screen, so don't worry if you can't find something. Loading up the Frognets app, it looks like all the Z code games made it over just fine. One of the most useful apps, though, is Card Text, which will read and write plain text documents. I've still got some clutter left over on this SD card, so let's try to find a text file to load up. This is probably what I'll end up using for writing most of the time, simply because when it comes to transferring documents back to the PC, I don't want to worry about converting them to and from POM database format. But more than likely, I'll probably just end up using the send text function. This virtually types your document into your PC via the USB cable one character at a time. It's faster than it sounds. My overall first impressions of this thing are, are overwhelmingly positive. I don't really have a bad thing to say about it other than the fact that it runs POM OS. Now I found that the shape and edge of the keyboard made it a lot more comfortable to use than my usual laptop. It weighs just over a pound and it's wide enough that your hands don't feel too cramped after quite a bit of use. And the keys do have a nice amount of click and spring to them. So I would say if you do come across one of these secondhand, it is definitely worth picking up. I hope this video was helpful if you ever need to get one of these things playing nice with a modern PC. And if you have any questions about this thing or own one yourself and have any tips for me, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to learn how to use this thing more effectively.